These are the top 7 most aggressive chest openings that can demolish each other's pieces on chest. The first gambit I'm gonna be talking about is with black and it starts with e4. We're gonna respond e5, knight to f3, trying to attack our pawn on e5. And so we are gonna go knight to f6 instead, attacking their own pawn. If they take the pawn, we will not take this. We are actually gonna go knight to c6, attacking the knight back on e5. And if they take back on c6, we will take back with the pawn on c6. We're gonna be looking at this f2 pawn. If they go pawn to d3, we're gonna go bishop to c5, immediately targeting the f2 pawn. First, let's see if they pin our knight. If we go and take the pawn on e4, we are actually blundering our queen. If they take the queen on d8, then folks, they are really lost and demolished and destroyed. Slide the bishop to f2, check to the king on e1, and so they have to move the king forward on e2. This is actually checkmate. Not only a checkmate, but a skewer, which is insane. So there's no doubt you can try this opening. I recommend you to try this, the Stafford Gambit, even advanced and expert players sometimes fall for this. I want to show you some more aggressive gambits. E4 and E5 again. They will go knight to F3, most common response. We're gonna go pawn to F5. We're gonna gambit a pawn. This will be dangerous because after they take, we will push the pawn on e4. If they move their knight to d4, we are gonna go knight to f6. If they go here, we are gonna go, we are gonna go pawn to c5, harass the knight once again on d4. The knight must move. We're gonna take the pawn on d3. And since they don't want to isolate their pawns, they will try to do this. Pawn to d5. This is suddenly a fork in the next move. So they have to anticipate it. And so if that happens, what will happen is that if we attack the bishop and the knight or the bishop, then they will have to undefend their own pawn on f5. And we will be getting back with development. There's another line here that I want to show you in the Latvian gambit. Bishop to c4 is another move in the Latvian gambit. And it is a wrong move because we're first going to attack again the knight on d4. And if it goes back, we are going to go and attack the bishop and look how powerful the position is we like have three pawns in the center of the board just aggressively attacking white which is crazy and so folks we are gonna take the free pawn on f5 and we have overall a very good advantage to the position let's go to our next gamut this time it's with white e4 e5 the most common response and we got the bishop's opening trying to develop the bishop here and they will go here the most popular move knight to f6 they will enter bishop's opening territory and so what will happen is that they, there are two free pawns. Let's talk about this first. This, folks, I'm not going to talk about because I have talked about it in another video. So, folks, if they take the pawn on e4, we take back on e5. The knight is oddly placed on e4. Surprisingly, though, and funnily enough, d5 is played most on the database, yet it's a blunder. Because if we take, they take, they blunder the queen. So they will not do that. So we will just take. Well, folks, we are now attacking the knight. Can be bad. Because after they go here, we have upper advantage of going bishop to f7. So they got two options, right? But they're not really options because over those two options, you lose the queen. And the other option, you lose the queen. So, folks, I recommend you to try this. Because you're not only sacrificing a bishop. So I would recommend you to try and analyze more of this opening or try to watch a video and more deeply about this opening. So folks, let's move on to the next gambit. We're gonna do something different. Not the most popular move. Let's go to d4 this time. We're gonna go knight to f6 and the most popular move is pawn to c4. We are gonna go in gambit the e5 pawn. Because if they take, there will be us having the advantage later on. Because after we go here, knight to g4. Attacking both pawns in the process, but in the process if they try to defend it We are gonna go pawn to d6 Attack their pawn and if they go and try to take it because they have no choice because we will take them instead We will have serious development and we have more development than our opponent This gamut is tricky enough to have some very good traps For example, h3 Would be a mistake because we take the pawn on f2 They have to take because this is a fork so they have to take, right? We can discover attack the king and the queen and they have to take the bishop or go somewhere. But taking with the bishop is the best response. And your opponent's queen is basically lost on d1. So this is a very, very aggressive gambit from this move. Like you build a castle. You could go for a fun move here, which is e5. And I recommend you to try this on your own. Let's go to the top six opening. 
e4, e5, and knight to f3 attacking the pawn on e5. We have seen this on black. But folks, what if they go here? Now folks, this is a different story. Because now, we are gambiting the pawn on d4. We're basically gambiting a pawn because we're gonna go bishop to c4. Why is that an advantage? We're looking for this pawn right here, maybe even a fork later. But we're not gonna do the fried liver by basically just gambiting a pawn in the center of the board. They will go here, bishop to c5, pawn c3, gambit another pawn. Because if we let themselves be taken anyway, that would be an unpleasant position for black, very very breathable for us and have more space which is what black doesn't want. So they have to take the pawn c3. They have initiated something out of the blue. This move is a sacrifice of a bishop on f7. So folks, they will take, so folks if they take, what will happen? This is a fork. So the bishop and to the king, they have to go back here. And a quick side note and a pro tip is to go here. Trying to force them to go here and block the check from the king. And so we will take the bishop. Why will we do this? Because just in case, if they take the pawn on b2, their rook gets trapped. So I recommend you to do this as an exercise. You can maybe even do this in other openings. Yeah. So let's go to the last gambit. This last gambit can be something a little bit short, but we'll keep it on here because it's kind of aggressive too. We're gonna go e4, e5, and then d4. You know where this is going? They take, we go here, they take. And you know what's that? You guessed it, the Danish Gambit. And so a lot of people play this, but actually not a lot of people play this. So folks, we were gonna develop this here, bishop, and if they take back, we just get a full double cannon of bishop. That is how exciting the Danish Gambit be. I mean, that's not exciting, of course, just having two cannons. I mean, you can use the bishops to checkmate early queen attacks like this. And probably beginners and intermediate might fall for this because some of them or most of them will fall for the trap because it's too aggressive. So I might show you one trap. If they go knight to f6, for example, we will push a pawn trying to remove that knight out of the board. And so if they go knight to e4, we will go actually sacrifice the bishop, they take back, we will go here. That's a check to the king and a fork. Now they cannot castle if they move their king. So folks, if they move their king now, we take, we have the upper advantage, we have a very good space in the board, and so, and so we will win the game. I mean, look at the, look at the king. This porch is already destroyed. They got plus one pawn, but that's fine. Their position is already destroyed. Meanwhile, we have the upper advantage here to castle also in the long run. And also their pieces are on the back run. We got so much pieces in the board quickly and we are very fast in the board. So folks, those are all the seven gambits I'm going to share you today. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please like or no, if you don't want to. So folks, please subscribe. I don't know to motivate me to make more videos like this. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching the video and enjoying the video. We just reached 1k. So chest pants and you know, stay cool. Bye.